<laughs> Carl, Carl was tells us this thing that um, when he was at, at home, when he was growing up, and someone would come collecting something like charity workers, um, even if they looked through the window, his mum and dad would say, just stay really still. So I've got this image of this charity worker looking through the window at three people knocking on the window, but they're pretending they're not there. Just frozen. <laughs> freeze. <laughs> oh, he's such a strange little man. Uh, some way that works at some point. They're going to have to give up eventually. Well, eventually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. if they're away. not moving, you have <laughs> yeah. to move on. Um, let me ask you about the Golden Globes, uh, which uh, were a, a triumph. Thank you. I, I think I um I think I uh, did what I said I was going to do. I wanted to improve on last year, nail it, and um yeah. Were you ang when you walked out at the beginning, knowing the material that you'd got? Were yeah. you anxious? No, I was excited. Also, I, I I didn't think the stuff I did was, you know, offensive. I mean, if they've seen my stand up, but I mean they'd have died. You know, it was it was. Yeah, but in your stand up, you don't single out people in the audience and do a joke about them. Whereas know, in that these, room, but the, you've got to remember these are the. Uh, richest, most powerful, most privileged people on the planet. And what did I say? What did I do? I didn't make personal attacks, really. They were, they were, they were light-hearted, like, roasts, like you do at a works do, and that was their works do. You've also got to realise that, um, uh, you know, there's four or five egos in the room, maybe, um, but there was 200 million people watching that at home. Yeah. Now, award ceremonies are boring enough. They are. But if you're watching it at home, you're not, you're not going to win an award. You're not there to win an award. You don't get any free wine. It's got to be three hours of entertainment, hasn't it? So, I, I felt I had a bit of responsibility to those people. And you know, I, I think um, I think I got it just about right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, uh, the controversy was was overwhelming. I mean, usually to get that much publicity in America, you have to kill and eat some people. Whereas I did it by uh, <laughs> mildly mocking some stars. But I've yet to find someone that was really offensive. Offended. No. That, uh, that's the other thing as well, because when one sort of journalist goes, oh, it was outrageous, they're all offended, then people, they get that received wisdom. But, uh, you know... Um, Robert Downey Jr. appeared offended by it on I stage. I think he was playing along. Do you? I genuinely think he was playing. I've met him a few times, and I think he was play he was doing that thing. Um, Tom Hanks and Tim Allen, they made that joke. They planned that joke. I, and I was with them afterwards. Johnny Depp, I've spoken to about five times since, and says he loved it, he wasn't right. offended. Charlie Sheen liked the joke. What? I don't know who was offended. Watching Robert De Niro roar with laughter. I, he called me. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just, he said, I want to say you did an amazing job and everything. He said, if you want me having a word with the Golden Globes, I love having De Niro on your side. I said, I think it's a, you know, a lost cause. But NBC invited me back straight away and, you know, they, they said they talked to the Golden Globes if I wanted to do it again. So what's happened? I don't think I should do it. I don't think I, It's nice to be asked. So you're... So NBC have said we'd like you, Golden yeah. Globes, so they have a committee that has exactly, to Exactly, yeah. And uh, live on air, the president, after I introduced him as is a man I had to help him off the toilet and pop his teeth in, um, he said, I'll never win another Golden Globe. <laughs> he said that live. <laughs> 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 I've won three, that's enough. <laughs> no. Yeah. But, um, no, I was having fun and, um, uh, 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 you know. So you, are you, you won't do it again? I don't think I should. It's Why really not? tempting. Because what's the, what's the best that can Did happen? Did you see how boring the Oscars were? Um, I didn't watch it, but... Why um, not? Why didn't you watch um, it? Well, because, again, I mean, why would I watch an award show on television? I'm either doing... I'm either hosting it or I'm there to win an award. I want... I, I don't know who watches these things out of choice. People do, but I... I, I, I they're, they're, they're awful. You know, in general, they're awful. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not entertainment, unless someone's really going for it. Um... Uh, uh, you, why, yeah. why do we want to watch people tell each other how good they are and win awards? You see, what, what you did, which I liked, is, you, as you explained earlier, you played it for the audience at home more than yeah. people in the room. Yeah, well, I felt that I, I was hired as a comedian, as opposed to a bloke, to introduce clips and say how brilliant everyone was in the room. They can yeah. do that themselves, you know. And, um, uh, 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 but, um, did, it, it, you, Hollywood's a very conservative place still, you know. They're, they're, they're very, very conservative. Would you but, ever live there? Uh, no. No, you like no. you live some of your time. You spend some time in New York, don't you? Yeah, I live in New, in New York, York and London, and they're, and they're two of the greatest cities in the world, and I love them both. And LA is great, but it feels like a waiting room. <laughs> you know what I mean? It feels yes. like a waiting room for something else. It's like you're, it, it's just for the work. It you felt know? like the whole world was talking about you the day after the Globes. Uh, the, they were, which was weird. I mean, that was weird. I mean, some people think I probably planned it like that, but I certainly didn't. I never thought it would cause that reaction. Uh, I don't care, and I wouldn't change a thing. And if I did it again, 
I'd go for it even more. So they've been warned again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peter Fincham, the head of ITV, is here. Yeah, he is. Hello, Peter. Good to see you. Are you familiar I'm, with the comedian Ricky Gervais? I've just I told oh, the world oh, it's your fault that I'm here today, in uh, a way. Good. Well, um, I'm happy to take responsibility, Ricky. How are you? How's it going, man? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Good. How's it going with you? We haven't had much for you lately. Very well. Very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been keeping a low profile. <laughs> so, Peter, I understand that you, did you put Ricky on the 11 o'clock show when you worked at Talkback, the company that made the 11 o'clock well, show? I, I, all that's true. I, can, I don't know if I can personally claim responsibility for that. Ricky was on the 11 o'clock show, and then we did a series called Meet Ricky Gervais. Exactly. And yeah. then the rest was history, because it wasn't long after that you went off uh, to do The Office. That's right, yeah. Um, well, I was already yeah. right in The Office, actually, um, when um, th this happened, which was which was nice. So, uh, um, uh, yeah, it was... Um, it was Does it was, anybody get to see uh, Meet Ricky Gervais? It must be one of those cult series. You know, I think they, it's on... It, the, does it, does the, it get recycled? Was that E4 repeat? thing where they show it on the iPlayer yeah, yeah, or something? Yeah, maybe they yeah. do, yeah. yeah. 4OD. Probably more like people that. have watched it there than uh, when it went out. But, um, <laughs> you know, as I say, it was trouble getting guests. <laughs> yeah, Wayne Hemingway was one of your guests, wasn't he? He was one of the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> he was our A-lister that week. Yeah, I think we led on him, didn't we? It was Wayne and the others. Yeah. Peter, some good news. Uh, Ricky Gervais is a, a big fan of the ITV show House Gift. Oh, mm. glad to hear. Well, Ricky, I welcome to the to, to the audience, to the fan club. It's a popular House Gift. show, absolutely. Yeah, Me, you're, you're very welcome. Wayne Hemingway, absolutely. And Paul Daniels. Like. Yeah, yeah. You see, Ricky, you, you seem to do an awful lot of work, and yet you seem to watch a lot of daytime television. I don't, I can't quite. Sky Plus. No, yeah. You don't have to miss a thing. But that's com <laughs> co comedians and comedy writers watch a lot of daytime television, don't they? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. But um, it, it, I, I usually watch it about six, seven o'clock. Is House you know. Gift genuinely good? Well, it's yes. fun. It's just a fun. It's fun. You know, you go round and you, you get involved and you go, oh, that's all. Don't go that lamp. I hope Lawrence wins that. Oh, what is that? Going? You know, you, you get involved. It's like watching. It's like watching neighbours pick thing. Not that I watch neighbours pick things around the house. I, I'm not a stalker. That would be weird. No. <laughs> just just going next door and watching people put up curtains. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, those things are. They, they do what they're meant to do. They're, do you watch a lot of television? I, I don't. I watch. Um, uh, I probably watch. Um, six or seven shows a week, but a lot of it is that sort of reality thing. Or I, I watch a lot of um, uh, American drama and, and yeah. comedy. What are you watching? Um, what British shows are you watching at the moment? Apart from the aforementioned House Gift. Um, I love things like I love things like The Apprentice. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, what else? What else do I watch? This I mean, there, there, there is only about five or six shows I watch. Do you watch? Regularly. Do you watch other comedy with a kind of? professional eye on it to check it out. I you, don't... Do you watch it in I it? really don't watch a lot of comedy. It has to be put under my nose, recommended by four or five people, because, I, you know, I'm usually doing something else. You know, I can't I can't read a book, because I read the opening sentence and I have an idea, and that's it. So, um, but I, I, do, I do watch a lot of um, American drama. I watch, I, things like, the, you know, the, the Wire and Sopranos and Damages yeah. and, you know, things like that, and Dexter. I, I just think that they are... They're so action-packed. They've done all the work for you. Everything is just... It's, it's like an art factory. Um, so that, those are the things that I really, really love. Gareth in Belfast says, uh, I believe that Ricky is a big fan of The X Factor, which uh, ultimately Peter Fincham here is responsible for. If he was offered one of the spots on the judging panel, Panel, would he go for it? Um, no, um, I, I didn't. I, I, I was a fan of that. I mean, I, I think that you have to put those things along with, uh, you know, guilty pleasure. I, I, I sometimes feel that, you know, um, those people don't quite know what they're in for. It, it's strange, isn't it? Because you see things like the X Factor, and they get like. 15 million. I think that's because most of the general public in England want to be on the X Factor. <laughs> they're, they're watching it thinking I could do that. And um, those are those are phenomenally successful. They're incredible. But I think you, you can't not be aware of those things. You have to have dipped into those because that that's what that's what most things are made of, you know, that those those sort of um those voyeuristic things, yeah. those uh, you know. And it's been good to me. Reality shows and docu soaps have been really good for me. I've sort of made a bit of a study of it with the office and extras and uh, so um you know you you can't avoid those things. Although I sometimes do feel guilty when it, uh, not so much the X Factor, but some of those shows, particularly coming out of America, are exploitation. They are people, they, they've, they've captured sort of like the, the mentally ill and they've paraded them around for our view and pleasure. Um, so they, they, they walk a fine line, some of those things. Do you think like. some reality shows exploit people, Peter? Um, I don't think the X Factor uh, does. Mm. I think that uh, um, I think the potential is there, but uh, I think you know, the X Factor 
Everybody turns up for an X Factor auditions because they want to be there. They they they've watched it for years. They know what it's about. They know about the kind of roller coaster nature of it, and of course, it might involve rejection for most.